Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you once again here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks for joining us. I say that particularly if this happens to be your very first time to be listening to the broadcast. We study God's Word together here, and we encourage people to be sharing the Gospels, particularly using the tool called a Gospel Tract. I've got a Gospel Tract in my hand, and in a moment I'll explain exactly what a Gospel Tract is. I want to give you a free gift of a sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks, and I'll be talking more about that as well as my announcer will be doing the same. Right now, though, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus in chapter 26. If you can, reach over, get up your own copy of the Word of God, and join me there. Leviticus chapter 26, I'm going to begin to read at verse 14 here in just a moment. Some time ago, I was preaching in a four-day missions conference, and the pastor asked me if I would talk to a married couple that were part of the church. You see, this couple had been married for about 20 years, but their home was a battlefield. The man and his wife basically despised each other. This had been hidden from the church for quite some time, but now their problem was becoming well known. The sweet love and the sweet devotion this couple once had was now replaced with bitterness. As we talked, this couple told how, at first, their bitterness started so small, it was kept even hidden from their children. But then their children became aware of their parents' sinful attitudes. And before long, the children were also bitter and angry and selfish, and they were fighting. Then, one day, one of the church members overheard the couple arguing and spoke to them about their their relationship, but to no avail. Now the whole church was about to know it. This former leadership couple was now embarrassed before everybody. Friend, that's a sad story. You see, years earlier, while the bitterness was still small, this couple had attended a marriage seminar. And at the seminar, they were confronted by the Spirit of God through the Word of God about the ugliness in their relationship. But but they chose to keep their hard-heartedness. Now, listen, friend, if you understand this story, then you'll understand Leviticus 26. It talks about how a loving heart can become a hardened heart. Get your Bible open to Leviticus chapter 26 with me. I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. Now, a gospel tract, and by the way, that word is spelled T-R-A-C-T. That's what the way you spell tract. A gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one tract in my hand right now is our shortest of all. It's the size of a credit card, and it's that way by design because the tract is entitled Charge It with a question mark. It's designed to make, to look like like a credit card. On the back of it are short, pithy statements coming from the Word of God dealing with the plan of salvation. The question is, admit you're a sinner. And then there's two statements, for all have sinned. Here's another one. The wage of sin is death. And the Bible references there. And there on the back of this very small track is the plan of salvation given by the Word of God. It's a great tool. If you buy your gasoline Uh, using your credit card. Once you go to the pump and get your, pull your credit card out, put this track in there. It's the right size. The next person using that gasoline pump will have to pull this out before their card will fit in. And you've just put the gospel in their hand. And by the way, many people use this when they're out to dine as the uh, track they use when they leave their tip. 
Charge It, great gospel tract. At the end of this program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and address. Please do that. We'll be glad to send that sample packet of tracts to you free of charge. You can just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. Well, with your Bible open, Leviticus chapter 26, beginning at verse 14, here's what the Bible says. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye will shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning ague, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. Look at verse 18. And if ye will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. That phrase seven times more is going to occur about four times here in this passage. Let me just stop reading right there. Leviticus 26 is about loving God. That's what the chapter is about. The point of the chapter is to show how an Old Testament Jewish person loved being in a covenant relationship with Jehovah God. And I divided chapter 26 into four parts. Each part has a word for a title beginning with the letter C, like in the word cat. Yesterday, we looked at the part one, which is the word care, That's the title, Care, based upon verses 1 to 13. As the Old Testament nation loved God, and that was seen in how they lived out their relationship and obeyed his precepts, then God's care for them was huge. You can go to our website and re-listen to yesterday's broadcast if you want to. But the second part of the chapter is verses 14 to 39, and my title there is Curse. The word is curse. When the Old Testament Israelite nation did not love God and did not love the covenant tie that they had with them, then things fell apart. God began to do things in their lives to get their hard-heartedness dealt with and get them back to him. In verses 14 to 39, there are really five waves or levels of chastening. Each wave was worse than the one before it. God's love and desire to bless the people and for them to enjoy being, well, being married to the eternal God of glory moved God to try to woo them back to him. That married couple I spoke of earlier did not become openly bitter and antagonistic with each other overnight. You know how that happens. Their covenant relationship deteriorated in stages. And by the way, that couple admitted that along the way, God had given them opportunities to fix things, but they loved their pride. They loved their bitterness more than they loved God. Well, the five waves here in Leviticus 26 of God's chastening began with disease in the physical bodies of the people and their land became less fruitful. It ended, though, in what you'll read about there in verse 29. Let me read part of verse 29. It says, Ye shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. And quote, probably Many of you are aware that this eating of the bodies of children did actually happen in Israel's past. If you have a cross-reference Bible, then you have a note that directs you over to 2 Kings chapter 6. There in 2 Kings 6, there's an ugly, ugly story. The curses that God began to bring on the people, these curses are ugly, but How can they be anything less than ugly? Sin is ugly. Sin is deceitful, and it tells you how beautiful it will make you, but it's ugly. It'll make you ugly from your heart to your actions. Wait, though. Wait, though. Let me take you to part three of Leviticus chapter 26. It's entitled Confession. This part deals with verses 40 to 43. 
Oh, friend, God did not start being the God of grace only in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No, God's always been a God of grace. He's always been ready to forgive. Verse 40 says in part this, if they shall confess their iniquity. Then in verse 41, in the middle of verse 41, it says this, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled. That then leads to verse 42. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob. That's what it says. It's an amazing thing what genuine repentance in the heart of a believer will do. It's amazing how a humble heart will move God to act. God has grace for the humble, the book of James, I hope you know the verse, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He begins to be gracious as soon as a broken, repented heart turns its feet in the direction of coming alongside and doing God's way and doing it with a, a right heart. God's grace begins to be poured out in great measure. Well, The final part of Leviticus chapter 26 is verses 44, 45, and 46. And my title word for this is the word covenant. Two ideas stand out here. One is that God will remember his covenant with Israel. This is an irrevocable covenant God's made with them. Now, if you, friend, if you have received Jesus as your Savior, as I have, then you and I are in an irrevocable covenant relationship with the eternal God. He cannot forget you. He cannot forget me. And friend, if you do not know this God who loves people so much that he sent his only begotten son, the pure Lamb of God, Jesus, to die to pay your sin debt, if you will receive him as your Savior. Do it right now. You will immediately be in an irrevocable covenant love relationship with the God of heaven. He cannot forget you. The other part here and these last verses that stands out is found in verse 45. It gives a reason. You see, God is working in the lives of those people in a covenant relationship with him because the lost people around them are watching. The lost nations, the pagan nations around Israel, when Israel got into the promised land, this other nations were going to be watching them. You and I live our lives in the sight of unbelievers today. They were living their lives out in the sight of unsaved nations around them. God's work in you and I even today to bless us or to chasten us will preach loud, it will preach long to those whose lives God desires to draw to himself. Oh, beloved, God is still a God of grace and mercy. He is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And so he allows you and I to be part of his drawing work in the lives of lost people. Oh, a lost person cannot get saved without hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ using the word of God. But friend, the magnet that draws a person to want to hear the gospel is often your life and my life living out covenant relationship with a God who loved us, gave his son for us, and he has given to us the gift of everlasting life. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.